So in today's video, I'm gonna take a look at overclocking my i7-8700K on my ASUS Z390 eGaming motherboard. So I did a video a little while back uh, overclocking um, myself to 5.1 gigahertz on all cores on this 8700K, which was really, really good performance uh, and a great overclock for this chip. But I wanted to take it a step further and let the motherboard overclock itself in this video. So we're gonna take a look at using ASUS's AI overclocking tool. So the AI on the motherboard will overclock our CPU itself based on cooler performance and what it expects the max frequency to be that the chip can handle. Um, so I'll zoom in on the screen and show you guys that. But before we do that, I wanted to show you guys this. So only 0.7% of viewers on this channel are subscribed. Uh, we've gotten our, ourselves up to 750 subscribers, but it would be awesome if we could hit that 1000 subscriber mark. So even if we only get, you know, like two or 3% of you guys to subscribe to the channel, that'll get us to that goal of a thousand subscribers. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button so we can hit that 1000 subscriber goal and really start to grow this channel. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys subscribed. So here we have our base profile. So this is just the base overclock that I have on uh, the 8700K. So we have XMP on for our DDR4 memory, uh, setting the speed to 3200 megahertz, which is just the out of the box frequency for that RAM. Um, and then all we have changed is a SUS multi-core enhancement as enabled. So that allows us to set each of the cores to the max turbo frequency of 4.7 gigahertz. Um, so that'll just set it to 4.7 on all cores. Um, and we left the CPU core ratio as auto, so the motherboard will automatically set it to 4.7. So we can see target CPU frequency as 4.7, uh, with AVX 4.7 as well, the DRAM frequency and the cache frequency. So all of that is set automatically with ASUS multi-core enhancement. So taking a look at the prediction section, we can see our cooler rating is 190 points. It's kind of an arbitrary number, but that's what it is scored within the BIOS based on the AI overclocking tool. Um, and we can see our max non-AVX and AVX stable clock speeds. So based on our cooler performance, the motherboard thinks that we can hit a frequency, an all-core frequency of 5.364 gigahertz on the CPU with non-AVX loads, and then a max stable frequency of 5.194 gigahertz um, for AVX loads. So um, first we're gonna run some benchmarks with Cinebench R20 at our 4.7 gigahertz overclock. Um, just with base ASUS multi-core enhancement. And then we will use our AI overclocking to automatically AI overclock to most likely our max AVX stable load of 5.2 gigahertz. So we'll go ahead, do our initial testing, and we'll come back into the BIOS and set up our AI overclock. So first taking a look at our 4.7 gigahertz, just base ASUS multi-core enhancement uh, overclock. Um, so just max the frequency at the max turbo boost of 4.7 gigahertz. I also have high performance mode turned on in Windows, so we're keeping it at that 4.7 locked. Um, we can now go ahead and open NZXT CAM, and you'll see within the software that our CPU clock is sitting right around 4700 megahertz, 469899, so right at that 4.7 gigahertz level. And at idle, our temps are sitting at 33 or 34C. So what we're gonna do is run Cinebench R20, and we're just gonna continually loop this. So we're gonna take our first score as our best score. Um, that's when our temps are gonna be at their lowest. That's where we're gonna achieve our best score. So we'll take that as our sort of target um, of what we wanna beat when we put our ASUS AI overclock on. So we will just go into preferences and say we want our minimum test duration. We'll probably run it for around 15 minutes. That'll give us enough to get to our equilibrium uh, temperatures on our 8700K. Uh, let the water in the Kraken uh, X62 get to its peak level as well. So once that reaches equilibrium, the CPU should really hit its equilibrium peak temperature. So we'll set our test duration 
for, let's see, 900 seconds. That should be 15 minutes. Hit OK. And we're just going to hit Run. And we're just going to do the multi-core test, not the single core. So we'll hit Run. I'll bring up Cam to the top. So we should be right around 100% frequency, or 100% CPU usage for 15 minutes. Uh, this will give us a really good idea of what our temps are looking like. So this is 4.7 gigahertz. Our temps will probably hit right around max 65 degrees C. Um, and we'll see what kind of score we see within Cinebench. For 100% CPU utilization, temperature right now is sitting at 62, 63 C. I can show you guys our cooling profile after we run this uh, 15 minute test. Um, but overall, temps are looking really good. Uh, and we'll take a look at the score once this first test finishes. And then after the 15 minutes, I'll show you guys a little bit, little bit of it uh, in terms of being able to see what the cooling looks like uh, on the CPU, uh, what the water temp looks like, and what our CPU temps look like over that duration. Uh, but we'll check it out after that 15 minute mark to see exactly where our temperatures land. And we hit a score of 3569 points. So a pretty good first run. The best score I've ever hit on this uh, CPU at the 4.7 gigahertz is uh, 3585. So a pretty good run. So now we'll let it run for 15 minutes, wait for the temps to equalize, see what our temps look like at 4.7 gigahertz. We'll let ASUS AI overclock sort of handle the CPU core ratio, uh, which we should land at around 5.2 gigahertz all core. Even with this being an AVX load with Cinebench, um, there is no AVX offset based on the AI overclock. So we should see 5.2 gigahertz throughout this test. Uh, so we'll get our new max score and our new temps at that frequency. So now that we're coming up on our final Cinebench run, um, our liquid temperature inside of our AIO has equalized at around 35 degrees C, and our CPU temp has reached a max of 66 C. Um, so those are really, really good temps for a 4.7 gigahertz all-core overclock on our 8700K. And we're seeing really good scores, pretty consistent scores as well on uh, Cinebench R20. So we started at around a 3577, and we've now worked our way down to a 3558. Of course, as the CPU warms up and we're keeping it at that temperature, you will see slight reduction in performance. Uh, so we are seeing that here. Uh, but overall, really good performance for our 8700K in Cinebench. Um, and with the 4.7 gigahertz overclock, plenty of performance and plenty of thermal headroom above that. Uh, so we just finished the run. The CPU has already come down to 37C, uh, back to idle, and our liquid is still at 35, so we'll bring that down uh, to around 32, 33C, uh, and then we will perform our AI overclock. So I'll boot back into the BIOS and show you guys that process. So after running our first set of benchmarks with Cinebench at our 4.7 gigahertz overclock, we're now going to use our AI overclocking tool. So everything is going to stay the same. The only thing we're going to change is CPU core ratio from auto to CPU core ratio to AI optimized. So this will then set our CPU target frequency to 5.2 gigahertz with light loads and heavy loads, AVX, non-AVX. But that is what we are setting our CPU frequency to. And you can see that up here. So target CPU turbo mode frequency, 5.2. Target CPU at AVX frequency, also 5,200 megahertz. That's all we're gonna do. So here we go, guys. We are booted into Windows with our 5.2 gigahertz overclock. So if I open up, first we're gonna start screen recording now that we are in Windows. But then if I go ahead and I open up Cam, we'll be able to see 
that we are now running at a clock speed of 5200 megahertz or 5.2 gigahertz, which is extremely awesome. Uh, with idle temps still at around 34 to 35 degrees, and if we go into cooling, our liquid temp has re-equalized after our 4700 megahertz testing back to 31 degrees. So our CPU idle is right at around 34 to 35 degrees at 5.2 gigahertz. So now that we're set at 5.2 gigahertz, we're gonna do the same testing that we did with Cinebench, so full AVX load, and see if our CPU can handle it, or if we get a blue screen of death, or if the system crashes, or if Cinebench crashes. We'll see what happens, but we'll go ahead and do that testing now. So we already hit 83C on the CPU on our first test, so we are getting extremely hot now, but we are definitely within the threshold of the CPU. You can get up to around 95C on these Intel processors without any worries. Um, but I don't know that you would wanna keep it at this frequency, hitting this temperature for an extended period of time. But for right now, for short burst load testing, uh, just to make sure that the overclock is stable, we are seeing some, <laughs> we're hopefully gonna see a really good score in Cinebench without really going overboard with our temps, which is really, really nice to see. And we are sustaining that 5.2 gigahertz throughout this test. Um, and it definitely is quicker than last time. I can just tell by the way it's running, uh, but we'll hopefully see what kind of score we get um, and how much better it is than our last 4.7 gigahertz run. And there we go. So we did blue screen at 5.2 gigahertz. So I almost spoke a little too soon so we'll go ahead, we now know that the AI overclock just wasn't stable enough. So we'll go ahead, return um, back to 5.1 gigahertz and see what kind of scores we see. So after our first run with the AI overclock, it did some recalculations and we can now see that our max non-AVX stable load is set to 5.1 gigahertz max for non-AVX and then 4.9 gigahertz for our AVX load. So that is what Cinebench is. Um, however, when we leave it at AI Optimize, it maintains our 5.1 gigahertz uh, overclock on all, all cores for AVX and non-AVX. And I haven't said too much about core voltages or anything like that. We're just letting the AI Optimizer and automatically just set everything that it should be setting. So this is if you have zero experience with overclocking, all you would do is hit the AI optimized setting after your computer's run for a little bit and it can get an understanding of what your cooler is capable of. Um, the motherboard should just do it for you. So I'm taking the role of just sort of a newbie PC builder or just getting into overclocking. Um, what is the capabilities of this AI optimized overclock? So now that we're set to 5.1, we'll go ahead, boot back into Windows and run our Cinebench tests again. So now when we boot into CAM, we can see that our clock speeds are now set at 5.1 gigahertz um, on all cores. So our AI overclock learned its lesson from our 5.2 gigahertz run and now hopefully at 5.1, which we've hit this overclock before, we'll be able to see no issues in terms of stability and we can get a good Cinebench run in. So we get, go ahead and launch Cinebench. Um, and see if our 5.1 gigahertz overclock can then sustain our 15 minutes of stability testing. Starting the test, we are at 100% utilization and now our attempts are only really hitting 77, 78 degrees C, whereas last time they were hitting 84, 85 degrees C. So we'll see if we can maintain this overclock of 5.1, which we're doing so far so good right now, but like last time, I don't wanna to speak too soon, um, but we're looking good so far. And we just hit 80C on the CPU. So again, you probably don't want to keep it at these temps for a sustained period of time. So if you're running your, your computer at 100% CPU utilization for long periods of time, you're rendering super large videos, you might not want to keep it at this high 5.1 gigahertz mark. Um, but for the most part, if you're just gaming on it um, or you're doing uh, some light stuff, you might either want to go for higher cooling to hit this 5.1 gigahertz or you might just want to lower it down to a frequency of like 4.9 or 5 gigahertz where you can keep the temps down a little bit more. So we passed our first run with a score of 3820. So a nice improvement over our 3577. Uh, we'll get the percentages all worked out for the end of the video, but we'll make sure we can sustain this for the next 15 minutes without any crashes, without anything like that. Uh, so I will catch back up with you guys after we finish our 15 minutes of Cinebench.
So coming up on our final Cinebench run, um, temps have sort of equalized out. So our liquid temperature has reached a max of 38 degrees C, which is three degrees higher than when we were at our 4.7 gigahertz overclock. And our CPU temp has reached a max of 84 degrees C. So well within the, the temp limits for this processor. Um, but if we had maybe a 360 millimeter AIO or custom water cooling, we could most likely hit that 5.2 gigahertz that the AI overclock was going for in the first place. But with our 280 uh, millimeter NZXT Kraken X62, we could only manage uh, 5.1 gigahertz, which again, a really, really good score um, and a really, really good overclock, especially for gaming, 5.1 gigahertz will handle most games extremely well, especially with our 8700K um, and our RTX 2070 Super. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, we did, of course, get that crash at 5.2 gigahertz, but we ended up with a nice stable overclock at 5.1. We didn't really talk about voltages, um, core voltage, SOC voltage, things like that. Um, in this video, it was really just to see what the AI overclock could, could do, uh, if it could manage to give you a stable overclock um, at 5.1 or 5.2 gigahertz. It managed to do it at 5.1. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so we can hit that 1,000 subscribers. If you have any questions, any comments, uh, leave those below. And I'll see you in the next one.